Today's video is about trees that can uh, get wet feet, so to speak. In the last five years, we have been uh, spoiled with summers that have been extremely dry. Uh, so we almost forgot that it can be totally wet as well. And uh, we're standing here uh, above the Dommel River in Sinterrode. And uh, next to the river, you can see poplar trees, uh, salix and alnus, trees that can get uh, wet feet. But uh, we're going to look at some other uh, ones as well in the nursery. So let's go. So this is a part of the art project, the Thousand Year Forest. On the right hand side, you can see the river Dommel flowing. And there on the left here, it's a wadi. It's like an area that can function as an overflow area. And in this area, Paxodium distichum has been planted. Paxodium originates from the, the southeastern part of the United States, uh, also from the state Louisiana. And it can really grow in, in uh, stagnating uh, water. In, that, in those areas, it can uh, make air roots, so it can take up air when the water is uh, too high uh, for the tree. They can get up to 15 to 30 meters uh, in height and also quite uh, wide. And uh, also notice the, the, the brown needles that are still hanging in the, in the trees, which give them a very uh, yeah, special appearance uh, in autumn. Taxodium distichum. This is Meta Sequoia Glitter Strawberries. Sheridan Spire. Uh, it's a tree that, unlike the normal Meta Sequoia, grows more upright. So if you want to make a beautiful uh, drive for your uh, company, for example, please use this one. It grows very fast, so you have uh, a result in a short time. It can also withstand a lot of uh, wetness uh, in the soil and it loses its needle uh, in the autumn. And then you see this uh, magnificent uh, winter silhouette. Meta Sequoia, Glitter Strawberries, Sheridan Spire. This is Elnus Spate Spate. It's an, uh, an Elnus, of course, and it uh, grows uh, most uh, fast from all of them because it has uh, quite large uh, lancet uh, leaves. It uh, gets up to 15 to 20 meters uh, in height, approximately. It can withstand uh, shorter uh, floodings and it's uh, a nice tree also in the winter time because you can see the uh, small catlings hanging in the tree already. A very nice fast growing tree on a spade spade. Uh, a very well known tree uh, that is resistant to uh, short and also longer uh, floodings is Liquidember styraciflua. And it's a tree that uh, looks uh, quite uh, purplish uh, when the ground is very wet uh, in autumn and you can see that uh, this tree is not lacking any water at the moment. Uh, and it has also like uh, corky fissures uh, growing on uh, the trunk. Uh, it uh, originates from the eastern part of the United States. It can get uh, 25 to 40 meters in height when it's totally mature. And it can be used as an avenue uh, tree as well. Very nice tree, Liquidumbar Stelisfluor. Another tree that can thrive well in uh, wet soils is uh, the Japanese saw-toothed oak Quercus acatissima. Uh, this one has a small uh, a saw to the leaf. It looks a bit like a uh, uh, castania leaf. So the tree in itself could function as a castania alternative as well. Um, it is very well densely uh, branched and it has a very nice rough uh, trunk. Um, it's not so well known, but we have a very nice lot uh, of them available. So why, uh, why not try out uh, this one? It's called Quercus acutissima. This is Nissa sylvetica, also called a tupelo tree in English. It originates from the Mississippi Delta in the United States. And it also produces a typical kind of honey called tupelo honey in uh, spring. Um, it's a tree that uh, gets uh, about uh, 15 to 25 meters uh, in height, so it gets quite uh, big and it can withstand uh, uh, smaller and also larger uh, floodings. Uh, it also excels in its autumn uh, coloration and it's almost December now. It still has got some leaves on it. Some are yellow, some are more red and it's a quite outstanding, lovely tree, Nissa sylvetica. Well, you can still see that we need our wellies here in the nursery. Don't forget to like us. Thanks for watching. See you next time.